Okay, welcome to another video. Uh, <clears throat> may sound a bit under the weather because I am a little bit, but I digress. Uh, we're gonna get to this video. So as you guys may know, when I replaced the coolant uh, a few videos ago, I damaged the upper coolant hose. So it's been slowly leaking away. So I finally, uh, bought some new coolant hoses so i got some blue ones from ebay uh just blue just to match the engine bay because of the cusco brace uh all over so i believe uh well obviously this is the upper hose but it goes like so so that is the upper one that replaces this i will be transferring uh this heat wrap over to the other new coolant hose and the <coughs> lower one, excuse me, goes under as well, which I think we have to do under the car. So doing it at home, uh, just have to lift it up, uh, take off the hose clamp on the bottom, take off the bolt that's securing it. And uh, then we gotta get to this pain in the ass clip that is all the way <coughs> down there. So as we get that one off as well, we do the lower one as well. Hopefully the original hose clamps fit. Uh, if they don't, then crap, we're gonna have to buy uh, some hose clamps. But uh, yeah, hopefully uh, the OEM, OEM spring clamps work with these uh, aftermarket ones, so yeah. All right, so literally just before I was gonna start, it bloody started, you know, spinning, raining a little bit, but that's how it is in New Zealand. But uh, yeah, so first off, just gonna remove the upper hose with the uh, I don't know what this is called, the spring tension coolant hose. Uh, remove it from the top and the bottom, remove this 10 mil bolt. Uh, with the bottom hose, what I'm going to do is take the tray off from underneath here. Uh, there's not much holding it. So as I get that off, I'll have to unsecure this uh, hose bracket. And uh, once I do that, then I'll uh, start to drain the coolant. And uh, do all that, but uh, yeah, I just want to get the top off first just so I know it fits. So, yeah, okay. So, as easy as that, the old hose is off. So, we have that, we have the uh, hose securing mounting bracket thingy. Um, I don't think I can probably remove this because it's like stuck on there, but I digress. We have the two spring constant tension clamps, whatever. So we reusing that. We have this fiberglass heat sleeving, which I recommend wearing gloves because if this gets your hand, which it is, it gets very very itchy. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna grab it. Um, also, should clean the surface a little bit of um, this upper hose and obviously the radiator, um, which is actually sure has a little bit of rust, like surface build up. But it's all good, so we're gonna come over here, grab the coolant hose, which we have here, and got to see if this goes on, which I think it does, just a little bit wee tight. So yeah, definitely goes on. So just gotta see which way it goes on, and then uh, I'll update you guys when uh, in a bit when I come back. So uh, the under panel is now off. It was a pain in the ass, but we got the uh, thermostatic on the thermos side. Uh, oh my God, I can't speak. So we got the uh, lower radiator hose off from the thermostat right here. So we have that pipe just hanging in there. Got the hose clamp off this side. So we're gonna take off this, took off the bracket as well. So it's unbolted. So I'm gonna try reach down here it's not too too hot let the car sit for a little bit and uh, hopefully I can get this hose off and uh, take it off so it is good to do this when the car is cold oh, oh my goodness so after like 30 minutes I don't know maybe an hour I got the lower hose on it may look different because it, I'm using a hose clamp not the constant tension like I have here that was easy obviously because I have more space um, so I don't know I just focused up I got the upper on as well with the hose clamp as well I just had to there was no space because of this upper radiator support but all the ones that could have space I put the OEM 
spring tension clamps on. So that is on now. The bottom, oh, so many cuts and all sorts. But here we go. That is the lower, that's all tight. So we're gonna just put back the intercooler piping. I uh, did have to lift up the car a little bit, but um, yeah. So we have all that in. Gonna put this bracket on and all sorts, put everything back, plumb it up, put the coolant back in and uh, we'll check for leaks. So yeah, this kit is really good, but the fitments are a little bit off just because it's a bit kinks, but obviously it's because it's an aftermarket intake and all sorts. So yeah, that took a long time, but we're gonna put everything back on and uh, fill it up with coolant, see if there's any uh, leaks. So I'm gonna check for that after as well. Okay, so everything's back on, everything's tight, I think. So what we're gonna do now, well, I'm gonna open the windows, just to let it air out. And then we're gonna start the car, add the coolant on, the coolant overflow filling thing. So we're gonna start it. It's gonna make a huge amount of noise. So we're gonna do this just to bleed all the air. So yeah, we're gonna do all this and see how it goes. Okay, so I realized I didn't film an outro, <coughs> so <laughs> uh, everything is on, as you guys may have seen on the last clip. So we, I did go for a little drive, um, so I had to top up the coolant level and uh, checked, it wasn't leaking, wasn't overheating, and I was driving it pretty hard. So all in all, it is good now, no more leaks, it is now fully complete. That is one headache that I don't have to worry about anymore. <clears throat> But on a sidebar, what I would say is, um, I, it's hard to say, but I probably wouldn't recommend, well, there's no need to replace coolant hoses, right? Unless it's broken, or if you're in my situation, it's leaking and it's rusty and stuff, then replace it. But I probably wouldn't replace it with this brand from eBay. I would probably just stick with Autobahn 88, same with what I have for the intake piping, this brand right here. Um, they do cost a bit more, which I do digress, they cost more, but I believe the fitment is a little bit better because as you guys see here, it kind of kinks really weirdly because I think the hose length that they have here for the upper thermostat uh, pipe isn't actually enough. I think if they added like 20, 30 mil, it would actually strain this whole uh, section out. But <clears throat> yeah, that's just a little thing that I would say um, is an issue with this hose kit um, the lower one actually fits all right but as you guys may have noticed because of the hose uh, location and how it is you can't actually put back the securing mount I mean this is already secure enough because obviously I put this heat shooting on so it's on the intake pipe but the lower hose it's all right like it's sitting on the aftermarket uh, intercooler piping so it wouldn't have that much issue, but I guess if you are running stock, um, you could probably put that back on. But uh, yeah, it's just the things with having aftermarket stuff that I may not fit. But uh, yeah, hopefully that was a little easy tutorial that you guys could follow. Whether or not you're doing it on the same car or if you're doing it on any other car, it's a similar procedure, just whether or not the clamps and the location and stuff. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video of uh, finally replacing these coolant hoses. Uh, delayed it for a few months, but uh, yeah, it's finally done. So that's one headache that I don't need to worry about anymore. So yeah, hope you guys like the video, and uh, yeah.